Hello underwater friends. Today, I'm going to tell you what I bring underwater with me in 2020. First, the camera. You cannot see it right now because I'm using it to film, but I'm using the Sony A7R3. The Sony A7R3 is a very good camera for still. It has 42 megapixels, it's a full frame, and it's a mirrorless. The autofocus is quite good and it also is very good for video. I can film 4K 30 frames per second and Full HD 60. Personally, right now, I always film in 4K 24 frames per second, but you have the option when you want to do slow motion or things like this to have a higher frame rate and then be able to slow it down and do a speed ramping. I really like the fact that this camera is small, so when I'm on land, the camera is not so heavy. I used to have a Nikon D800, which was really good as well, but much heavier. This one is compact. Also, for the lenses, now Sony have the whole range of lenses, and even other brands are making very good lenses for this camera. So no need for extra. Actually, yes, a little. I would wish to have a 50 or 60 millimeter macro, but so far, nothing. For the lenses, I use primarily two lenses underwater. Number one, my 1635 Sony, it's an F4. I wish I could have the G Master 1635 as well, which is 2.8, but the price is way too high for me. And also it's very heavy. And I also use a 90 millimeter macro lens, which is really good for macro and super macro. For the 1635, I have a zoom gear on it. It allows me to go from 16 to 35. And actually, even if I have smaller subjects, I can go on APS-C, mainly for video, which allows me to go up to about the equivalent of 50 mm, which is very good for small subjects. For the housing, I'm using my Nauticam housing. I'm very happy with it because it's very reliable and also it has a vacuum system. So I pump the air out of my camera before going in the water and there is a sensor that will tell me if it's properly sealed and if it's completely vacuum. So when I go underwater, there is no risk of getting flooded or anything like this. If you're interested in knowing how I put my A7R3 into the Nauticam housing, you should check the link of the video up there. With the housing, all of the buttons are available, so I can do anything I want, which is quite cool when you're underwater. If you're new to underwater video and photo, take time to get used to the buttons. They're not in the same place as on the camera, of course, because the housing is much bigger, but it's important to know. I always do my videos using manual settings, so of course, aperture and speed have to be able to be changed very quickly and I don't need to think about it so much. But I may also want to change ISO, focus zone, and many other things. So make sure that you know your equipment first. For the ports, I have two main ports. This one, which is for wide angle. So it's a glass port. It's a 12 inch glass port. I think it's very important to have a glass port. I used to have fiberglass, but they always get scratched. You can be very cautious and there will always be a little scratch on it. So it's not so bad as long as you film and you take pictures underwater and stay like looking down. But as soon as you want to take a sunburst or over under pictures, then you will have problems and you will see all of the little scratches on your dome. If you're doing picture, it's quite easy to correct. But if you're doing video and you have like a scratch in the middle, 
well, it's going to look bad and it's going to be very difficult to take it out. I also have a macro port, which is good for my macro lens, of course. So I have my 90 millimeter that fits right in there. As you can see on top, also, I have a flip filter. This is to allow me to put my diopter. For the diopter, I use an AOI. It's called UCL900. It's about plus 12.5, and it allows me to take photos and videos of very small subjects. So with the flip filter, it goes like this. I have my filter on it. I screw it once on. Now it's on, and then when I'm diving, I can press this button, take it out if the subjects are too big, or press again, put it on, and just have it like this. It's very inconvenient to have to take it out and put it back every single time. Also, you have risks of scratching it and having problems with your lens. So when it's on, it's on, in, out, very easily. To take photos, I also have a flash trigger. It's a flash trigger from Nauticam. You place it on the hot shoe of your camera and then you have two spots here where a small LED will bring light when the flash is on. The main problem with this item is that it's not TTL. So you have to use your flash in manual mode. When doing wide angle, it's no big deal because anyways, that's the best way to do. But sometimes doing macro, I would love to have a TTL. It does exist, but unfortunately I bought this piece. It costs $220 and that's pretty much the only piece of gear that I'm not so pleased with. For about the same price, I could have bought some TTL enabled triggers like I think there is an iTurtle brand. It's a little bit more expensive, but much better than this. For the filming gear, I also use a GoPro. It's a GoPro Hero 7. It's not the last model, but it's good enough. On it, I have a flip filter, which I don't need to use so much when I'm using it with my big rig because I have enough light. I have a small stand here that I can put on my port for 90 millimeter macro. And then even when I'm filming macro or taking pictures of macro photography, I'm always ready for a bigger thing. There is nothing worse than going for macro photography or macro video and then a big animal pass by and then you just look at it and are like, oh, I wish I had my camera with me my wide angle camera, sorry. Well, it's okay. I have my wide angle. Now for the light, I have two things on me, actually four, because I have two of each. I have two strobes, the CNC YSD1. They're a little bit obsolete. I mean, now they have YSD2 plus or something, 2Z. Uh, they will probably come up in a month or so with the YSD3 but it's still a really good flash. It has TTL capability, which I don't use because of my trigger, but the flash is very powerful and it works really well for me. For the light, I have the Pro 8 from iTorch. They're 3000 lumen lights with a wide angle. It's about 110 degrees. This I can use it when I do video. I have actually a third one that I can place on top. Uh, it's really powerful and I wish I had a little bit more, but 3000 lumen works in my case. And actually most of the time I put it on half power, which is good enough and allows me to last for two dives. When I do photography on the lowest setting, it's way enough. And then I can get a nice focus gear and then trigger with the flash when needed. Now for the accessories, I have a couple of extra things. So for the arms, I'm using two big arms that are floats. Um, they float a little bit. 
Underwater, this housing and camera is quite heavy. So by having those two arms that float a little helps me to make it a little bit lighter. Also, I use tripods. With this model, I can attach three feet to my housing and then with the clamp, I can get it tighter or looser and get in the position I want. I know there are adjustable feet uh, that can get either longer or smaller, but I looked at the price and I was like, Ugh! it's a little bit too much for me. Well, I think I told you about everything that I bring underwater. Don't think this came in one day. Actually, it kind of did, but no. Actually, underwater video and photo is quite expensive. You don't need to start with a setup like this. I have been taking photo and video underwater for about 15 years. It's my job to dive, it's my job to make photo and video and teach people how to do it. So, of course, my rig is expensive. But there are many options, many ways to take good underwater videos and still have a reasonable price. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you're interested in more content, you can check my series Six Steps Underwater Photography and we'll know about many things about photography. Or if you want to see my videos, you can check Cebu 2020. It's one of the latest and you'll see big and small things from Cebu Island in the Philippines. Thank you. Bye bye.